when you're picking your investment vehicle, and I'm going to go over a bunch of different examples in just a second, you have to remember what your goal is as an investor because that's going to help guide your investment decisions. And your goal can generally be, I want growth with my money, meaning I want to see the value of investment go up, or I want cash flow or a hybrid of these two. Growth means I'm investing my money into something that has more risk, but it has the potential to grow a whole lot more quicker. Because now these are companies that are generally smaller, they're trying to grow quicker, they don't have a lot of profits because they're reinvesting all their money back into their company, versus cash flow is now, this is a company that has big profits. They're making a lot of money, they're already very large, and now with their profits, they can just pay it out to their investors, people like you and me, in the form of dividends. So now you're getting cash flow in your hand, it's a little bit less risky, but you're gonna see a little bit less upside because now these companies aren't gonna be growing as fast as maybe a growth company. So a little bit less risk, but you're getting more cash flow today versus I want more risk for the potential for higher potential growth. Now, once you know what your goal is, this can then dictate how you're gonna be investing your money. For me, the bulk of my stock market portfolio, especially my passive portfolio, is for cash flow because for me, I like cash flow. Cash flow funds the guac flow because when I have this type of cash flow, well now I have investments that are paying me every single quarter and every three months I get more money deposited into my investment account. Now for me right now, this money that gets deposited is being reinvested, buying more cash flow producing assets. So every week I'm putting money into my accounts that way it can buy me more cash flow. And then when my cash flow investments pay me with cash flow, I'm using this cash flow to buy even more cash flow so it's like a machine that's constantly working to produce more cash flow for me. Let's go over some examples so you know exactly how this works and what it looks like. Now I gotta remind you that everything that I'm about to discuss are just examples. I'm not telling you what to invest in. You have to do your own research. Investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. You might even lose money, which is why you need to always do your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. So let's go over some examples of how this works. Let's say you just wanna put your money into the stock market. Well, there's an ETF for that. There's a total stock market ETF that gives you exposure to pretty much all the major stocks on the stock market. This is VTI. So if you invested in this VTI ETF, it is by an investment fund called Vanguard. You can look it up on Google, go to Google and search VTI Vanguard and you will learn everything about this. And what you'll see is that this gives you exposure to the broad stock market. So when you invest in this, you're getting exposure to the stock market. If you wanna invest in the S&P 500, which is a group of the 500 biggest companies on the stock market, well, there's an ETF for that. And I should also tell you that these ETFs with a star next to them are funds that I have my own money invested in, just as a disclaimer. But if you want to invest in the S&P 500, then you have a couple ways to do that. You have SPY and VOO. Both of these are two different ETFs that both give you exposure to the S&P 500. They're created by different investment institutions, but they invest in the same 500 companies generally. The difference is SPY and VOO will have a slight difference in asset allocation. That means that they value some companies more than others because both of these ETFs create funds of the 500 different companies and then they allocate their money accordingly based off of what they think is the best. Well, VOO and SPY have some slight differences. Like they value Tesla a little bit differently. They value Johnson & Johnson a little bit differently. But besides that, they work primarily the same way. Now, these are two ETFs. VFIAX is the index fund version to invest in the S&P 500. So now, if you put your money into this index fund, now you're investing into the S&P 500 through an index fund as opposed to an ETF. VOO and VFIAX work very similarly. This is an ETF, this is an index fund. They're both created by the same Vanguard. If you wanted to invest in the NASDAQ, which has a lot of exposure to tech companies, then you can look into the QQQ ETF. If you wanted to invest in the Dow Jones, you have DIA. If you wanted to invest in just value companies, well, Vanguard has an ETF for that. It's called VTV. If you wanted to invest in emerging markets, these are countries and companies overseas that don't rely on the dollar that are working to grow. This is VWO, so it's a way to diversify your money outside of the United States. And if you want to invest your money into dividend paying ETFs, this is an ETF that invests in high dividend paying companies, then you can look at something like SCHD. 
this is a dividend ETF. Now, let me remind you that this is not a comprehensive list of ETFs. There are so many different ETFs out there. There are even more ETFs than just this for dividend or emerging stocks or everything else. There are so many ETFs out there, which is why this is just a place to start and then you can start doing more research. But this is where now you can start asking, who is the company that's issuing the ETF? Because if it's a reputable company, well then that gives you a little bit of assurance. Then you wanna look at the number of assets under management, meaning how much money does this fund actually manage? This is very easily accessible information with a quick Google search. And then you want to research what are the actual assets in this fund. Like when we talked about VTI or VOO, you can see that these invest in a particular group of stocks and each website will show you which companies are listed in this particular ETF. As an investor now, it's important for you not just to stay up to date on what's happening with your investments, but what's happening in the broader economy because that can influence your investments. And an easy way for you to do that is to join something like Market Briefs. It's a free newsletter that I created to help people like you, to help investors stay up to date on what's happening in the financial markets. It's super easy to read. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning. And every day we're breaking down what's happening in things like the general economy, the stock market, the housing market, crypto, the global economy into a fun, witty, and easy to read email. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, it's completely free. And I'll put the link to how you can join for free down in the description. Hello. The last bit that I want to talk about when it comes to the research aspect of knowing what you're investing in is looking at the expense ratio and the yield. The expense ratio is the fee that you're going to have to pay for investing your money into a fund. Whether it's an index fund or an ETF or a mutual fund, all of them are going to have a fee and the fee is called the expense ratio. And this is very easy to find. You can go to Yahoo Finance to find this, Seeking Alpha. You can go to the actual investment institution that's issuing the fund. You just have to look at what the expense ratio is. And what you see is that this expense ratio is the fee that you're going to pay every single year for investing your money into this fund. When we talk about part number two, I'll show you the real cost of this fee, which is why you want to have ideally a lower fee if possible. And then the second thing that you want to understand is the yield. This is the dividend. This is the cash flow that you get. Now, sometimes you're going to be investing in funds for the cash flow. Other funds, you might not be investing for the cash flow, but they might be paying cash flow as well. This yield is the cash flow that you will get. So if it says it's a 1% yield, that means if you invested $100 today, you will get $1 in cash flow just for owning the investment. And this is cash flow that you're getting, not for selling the stock, but just for owning the stock. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.